Amen. Thank God for the youth of ABC. I got a chance to teach the youth class this morning. Man, we got some good kids in this church. Good old kids. <laughs> Amen. Adamandbeliever.com forward slash. Look at somebody and say, I, I identify. identify. You know, yeah. So, I don't even know how to, how to start. But we were watching the Super Bowl, and they kept showing these commercials, these Jesus commercials. And, man, they had a priest washing the feet of a trans dude. And then, then they got, you know, then they have the statement of what they believe Jesus did and didn't do. And so I researched this group and found out this group was owned originally by a Christian group. Now it's not. It's owned by a firm. And they won't let you know who really is behind it. Like you can't even find like who's really creating these. They're just coming up and this firm was given like $900 million to put this up. But it's propaganda. And it has no real origin and we know it definitely has no biblical base. When did the world start speaking for who Jesus is? You can't speak about who Jesus is without knowing who he was. Knowing who he is. Amen. The sinners back in this day, the Bible said they sought him out to eat with him so that they could learn who he was and find solutions for their issues. Jesus told you who he was and why he was here. He was here to destroy the works of the devil. So he wasn't here to make you comfortable the way you are. Amen. I've been saved for 30 years, Elder, and I'm not comfortable with who I am. Jesus is still working on me. And I can't decide what parts of the world I'm going to keep if I'm going to be close to him. Amen. Because any part of the world that I love, the love of the Father is not in it. So I have to make up my mind that if I'm going to be close to Jesus and stay, not encounter him, but stay with him, then there are changes I have to make. Changes that he requires. Amen. So you can't, you can't sum that up in a 30 second commercial. Somebody paid I think it was $7 million every 30 seconds to advertise during the Super Bowl. That's some expensive foolishness. But it's, it was plotted and planned. Because people that aren't in Christ are trying to identify with Christ to change how we see Christ. But Jesus told us who he was. Amen. Adamantbeliever.com forward slash I identify. Now, well, you can't identify with what he looked like because the Bible doesn't tell us what he looked like. The Bible could have described him and told you he was five foot five and, you know, had a, he could have, because the Bible described other people like that. Obviously, the Bible didn't want you to know what he looked like. Yeah, because as a man, the Bible didn't want you to hold on to what he looked like because we can't see him like that. Now, the pro-black, woke, black, black of the black, blacks. <laughs> Hebrew and you know, all the just Negrodom. They believe that this passage described what he looked like. Now, if Jesus walked around looking like this, nobody would have talked to him. <laughs> his head and his hairs were white like wool. Wait, wait. 
wait. Because they try to say his hair was his head and his hairs were white. His head and his hairs. Was he a white man? Because <laughs> his head and his hairs were white as snow. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. I'm not talking to nobody with flame and fire eyes. That sounds pretty scary. And his feet like an under fine brass as if they burned in the furnace. They say, oh, that means he black because I got black burnt brass feet. That ain't describing your crusty, ashy feet. And his voice, now this is it. Now ain't nobody talking to Jesus if every time you talk to him, his voice sounded like many waters. Now here's the point. If, they, if it's describing what he, if they're going to use this, then here's what he was walking around with. He had in his hand <laughs> seven stars. Seven stars. Okay, so I'm already getting away from him because he had stars in his hand. Seven. And out of his mouth with a sharp two-edged sword. So now I'm really not talking because I'm going to get cut and I'm going to die. See, this is not describing a human. This is describing a glorified being that is bringing judgment to the churches. This is his judgment look. His countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. I mean, this is not described. He wasn't walking around with stars in his head. What was he going to do with them when he went home? This is ridiculous. See, you got people will take little pieces out of the Bible, and because they believe you don't read it, they believe you'll believe it. After I said last week, folks, I don't care what Jesus looked like, but the Hebrew is like all of them came on the page. I, well, I care. I care because the Bible told us what he looked like. His hair was like white as wool and his feet was brass. And Well, what about his head? Was his head white too? I believe this is describing translucency. When it said white, it was almost clear because he's a spiritual being. But people just, you can't use this to describe a human. So we know this wasn't describing the Savior and what he looked like. Because God did not want us caught up on what he looked like. When people are caught up on the way somebody looks, then they have to try to identify with the looks of that person. And if he don't look like you, then you can't identify like someone that he does look like. And this is where we get this. Huh. Just, I mean, come on, man. Every kind of uh, Chinese Jesus. You got every, you got Jesus. You got Fu Young Jesus. You got Leroy Jesus. You got uh, every <laughs> you get every kind. Uh, I mean, sausage. 
I don't need a saucy Jesus. Sexy. Rasta. Rasta Jesus. Yeah, see, this is too much. The problem with this is there's no way to receive any of these without making them an idol. Somebody said, well, I don't make pictures. I got pictures of people. I don't make that an idol. I don't make the pictures I see in an idol. But is your picture of Jesus accurate? If the picture's not accurate, it's false. If it's false, it's a false image. Oh, you don't have to clap. I know. I'm on this. I'm on this. I'm going to tell people all the time. See, that's why I don't, I don't even like shows. And I know some of y'all, you know, the chosen and all them shit. That's your, just your, just. I don't watch shows where people portray Jesus. That's me. Now, I, I'm not telling you it's a sin, whatever, but that's me. The chosen folks have called me constantly trying to get us to do a premiere and gather. I, I'm just not doing it because who is this dude? Does he only play Jesus or do he play other people? I don't want to see him playing Jesus on this and then he's Obi-Wan Kenobi in Star Wars. I don't need to, I mean I I don't like that. That's me. That's me. Can I have me? Can I do me? I don't wear crosses. I don't like crosses. I don't like that because that's a symbol of murder to me. So I don't wear them. We don't have them. You don't see them nowhere around this church. That's me. You can go to another church, boy, be crosses everywhere. They have one for you to get on. I just don't. That's us. That's, that's us. Easter Sunday, we ain't bringing a cross in here, and I come out in a sash and get on it. They do that at churches. <laughs> I ain't showing my crusty legs to try to prove a point. That's just me. But I feel like a lot of times we better be careful of the imagery because when you start praying, you'll see these same images. That's why. Now, I put this on here just so you'll know the Bible says, for one, all of these are wrong because Jesus didn't have no long hair. Okay, we know that because nature teaches us that according to the Bible. Okay, so you already got that part wrong, but that part came from many years ago where the great impressionists painted Jesus with long hair, but they was basing it, uh, basing it on what they look like. And that's what people are going to do. I don't want to see a white Jesus because I don't believe he was white. I don't want to see a black Jesus because I don't believe he was black. I believe God didn't want us to know what he looked like. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Idolatry comes from the Greek word, idulolatria. That's it. So, idulolatria. That's, and that means the worship of false gods. That's idolatry. So, if the image is not accurate, then it's false. So a picture of your grandmother, you ain't looking at it and worshiping that. But if it's supposed to be Christ, then you have to esteem who's ever on the picture as a deity. Even if you're not worshiping it, if you esteem that as him and, that, and it's false, then it is idolatry. There's no way to not do it. Amen. I just think folks just have let Hollywood lead us somewhere. And that's why when the book of Clarence came out, everybody was good with it. Because it's, it was a slow and it's taken us there. After Jim Cavell, The Passion of Christ. And it was a good movie, but I don't want to watch it. It bothered me. Because you ain't Christ. Then you jumped in a runaway car and stole something in another movie. I mean, I just... I don't, I don't like that. Now, that's me, y'all. Hey, I'm not coming against what y'all watch, what y'all like. That's you. I just don't like it because I, I just want to see Christ as Christ. I don't want to see him as nobody I know yeah. or nobody I can go meet. 
man, you did a good job playing Jesus. What? Exodus tells you, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or what? Any likeness of what? Any likeness of what? Anything that is in heaven above. Is Jesus in heaven above? Is God in heaven above? Anything. So, the main reason for these photos and statues and different things is people want to bring Christ down to human level or understanding so that they can understand him better. But the mystery of Christ is what makes him greater because that means our minds can't fully comprehend him. Yeah. Yeah. Our minds can't understand it. So God don't want us putting a picture of him in our minds. He even told Thomas when Thomas was like, Lord, show me this and do uh, uh, so I can prove that it's you. He showed it to him and then he said, blessed are they that have not seen and yet believe. So what it is, he didn't describe himself to us. He don't want us to physically see him so that our belief will be stronger. Hey, you don't have to agree with this man. Somebody still, man, but the chosen was my favorite. Watch it and enjoy it. I'm not coming against that. I told y'all that was me. That's just me. Hey, man, why, why wasn't he black in that? And would, and would everybody be watching it if he was black on that? See, that's why you don't do it. Look, ain't nobody clapping. Uh -huh. If he was black, you know you wouldn't watch it. Oh, I ain't watching <laughs> that Negro. <laughs> what? <laughs> you wouldn't be watching it. <laughs> Amen. So just understand. Pray about it. Ask God sometimes. Don't just do what society tells you to do. Amen. And is it biblically correct? So I got transcript and there's stuff in it that they added for effect. Which, okay, so you portraying, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God, then the word became flesh. This is the word. You're portraying the flesh word and changing stuff, adding stuff for dramatic effect. What you put on, did you put it on the screen, what you're adding? So we'll know the difference between what you added and what God said. Somebody going to leave the church over this. <laughs> the, 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 the chosen crew don't know you. Where you going? <laughs> but all these shows, every, th every time they do it, it irritates me. Because I know you are, first of all, what color you going to make it? And that's, that's where the mistake starts. So he said, don't make an image of anything that you can't prove what it really looks like. Or it's going to bring about a problem. Can I keep teaching in the house today? Because once you start making them look like you want him to look, now you got to make him act the way you want him to act. You haven't brought him down to human level. See, once you leave the Bible, you can make him whatever you want. Remember they was all wearing the what Jesus, what would Jesus do bracelets? They went out of style because did nobody know what Jesus would do. Because wasn't nobody reading the Bible. You can't sell that bracelet if they're not reading the Bible. What would Jesus do? I don't know. What would he do? I'm asking you. The bracelet is asking you a question, not me. <laughs> I got it pointed in your direction. It's upside down when I see it. 
But the Bible tells us what Jesus would do. But these commercials, man, I'm a, I got to show you. I'm going to show both of them for those of you that did not see them. So just get your stomach ready. Jesus, first of all, didn't walk around washing people's feet. So you didn't, that's, I don't know the Bible. He washed his disciples' feet to teach them how to be, to humble themselves. <clears throat> yeah, he didn't go around washing brown sugar's long leg feet. He didn't wash his feet from across the street. His leg was so long. Why is his leg that long? And had a priest washing his feet. So what this imagery is doing is they're trying to change Jesus into something that he's not. So that when they say they, a person says, I identify as male or female, whatever, now we can put an identity on Jesus. And the majority of the people that saw the commercial don't read the Bible. So now they've been introduced to a Jesus. That's false. Can I keep preaching? To have Christ's identity, we must view truth as love and not hate. <laughs> so they said Jesus did not hate, he loved. Well, Jesus did not hate, they're right. But he was hated because of his truth. Can we have a commercial about the people hating Jesus? Why did they hate him? Because of his truth. Why did the sinners come to him? Because of his truth. Why did he eat with the publicans? Because of his truth. So Jesus did never come around them to condone their behavior. He came around them to show them why their behavior is detrimental and how to be free from it. The Bible said whom the son is set free is what? Free indeed. Galatians 4 and 16. Am I therefore become your enemy? Because I tell you the truth. So in order for me to not hate you, in your eyes, I just have to be silent. And if I say the truth, it's hate. Bible said in the last days they wouldn't have the love of the truth. Yeah. Our identity should be based on God's biblical code of morality only. Not personal feelings, societal norms, or man-made doctrines. So our identity is based on what God said is right and what God said is sin. That's our identity. Amen. I identify with what God said. I'm not going to change what God said because I fell into something. I get out of what I fell into because of what God said. Amen. I don't change the rules because of my own error. I love when the old folks you sing that song. The Bible is right. Somebody is wrong. Colossians 3 and 9 says, Lie not one to another, 
seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds. Lie not. What is a lie? When you're quiet and you condone another person's behavior that's against God, you're lying. You're making them feel good the way they are as if they can stay that way and be Christian. That's lying. Perjury is lying. And you can perjure by not speaking. So the Bible said, don't lie to one another. Tell each other the truth. Brother, that's a sin. You can't keep doing that. You can't keep living like that. You can't, man. You just can't. It's against what the Bible say. You can't keep listening to that music, brother. That music has a message in it that's against what we believe. You can't keep juking at the joint. That's why they call it the juke joint, because folks in that juking. You can't keep juking, because you're using your body to entice in an alluring way. It's a sin. Amen. You can't upload half-naked pictures on Instagram. Well, they within the guidelines. Whose guidelines? The devil's? No, they got to be in God's, within God's guidelines. And he said, don't ever put an occasion to stumble or fall in front of your brother. That includes your bosom too. And your backside. And your pecs. That's an occasion to fall. That's why we dress up in here. Amen. When I say dress up, I mean we're fully clothed. Amen. We don't have to show you the tax from back in the day. The bullet wound from when you was running the streets. <laughs> but he said, lie not one to another. Seeing that you put off the old man with a deeds and now put on the new man which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. So we got to start changing things when we come to Christ. So the identity, if we're going to identify with Christ, then we identify with change. We identify with freedom. Because whom the son is set free is what? Free indeed. We if we're going to identify with him, it's freedom. Not the long gay leg. No, freedom. This fallen world is lost in sin. And we as believers are supposed to have the answers that they need to repent and change. This is our identity from God because this was Christ's identity in the earth. Now would Christ have walked up to these witches and said, hey, I want to get something to eat and ate with them and then left and they all still look like this? No, he would have wanted to talk to him and say, why are you so ugly? I'm not talking about your face. I'm talking about your ugly darkness ugly. Why are you covered in darkness? Why are you living your life in the shadows? What happened to you? How can I help you? How can I help you out of this? Because you're not happy. Anybody ever seen a happy witch? I ain't talking about Wizard of Oz. I'm talking about in real life. They're depressed all the time. Or the woke folks and the satanic after school club and all of this. God wouldn't know. He, Jesus is not condoning the LGBT and abortion and all these things. He's not hanging out with them to hang out and approve of them and make them feel good the way they are. No. Mark says, when Jesus heard it, he said unto them, they that are whole have no need of the physician, but they that are sick, I came not to call the righteous. Now, if you ever want to know what Jesus would do, read this. He's telling you exactly why he came. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to what? 
repentance. So if he's hanging with sinners, it's so they can repent. If he's spending time with sinners, it's so they can repent. Though we may sin at times, believers do not practice sinful lifestyles, condone practice of them, or set idols in our lives that conflict with our stance against sinful living. Amen. Everybody in here has sinned before, right? We don't change the rules because you sinned. You repent and adhere to God's rules again. Yeah, you don't change it. You know that you was wrong. Folk give more respect to their coach on the football team than Jesus. They make a mistake on the, on the field, they change it. Next time, coach, I'm not doing that again. That was a mistake. You went against my rules. Well, what about Jesus? Ephesians 5 and 11 says, and have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but rather do what? Reprove unfruitful works of darkness. So if you around them, if you're going to eat with them, then you need to be reproving them and not condoning them. Amen. In other words, we are human. We may err, but we do not condone the behavior even if we are guilty. See, that's what preachers are doing now. They fall into sin and stay there. Then change the rules to make it okay to be there. And lead their congregations and followings into sin. Because they decided to park there. Instead of repenting for being there. And letting everybody know I shouldn't have been there. And you don't go there. Amen. That's a herald. Instead, we repent and turn from it. So we don't condone it, but we repent and look at somebody say repent and turn from it. The tolerance of sinful behavior by leaders is compromise, which causes people to stumble. Romans tells us, let no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. When I was traveling doing the truth behind hip hop, that was the part I enjoyed the most was the next day when everybody would bring all of their CDs and throw them away and all of that. And I saw that as stumbling blocks that they were ridding themselves of. And God was using me to get stumbling blocks out of people's lives. But the flip side of that is there are so many pastors that are putting stumbling blocks in people's lives by condoning behaviors. Bringing secular artists. It's a pastor in Chicago, John Hanna, who brought SWV to his 60th birthday party. Can we get freaky tonight? That's what you brought to your church, your anniversary, SWV, a pastor. Yeah, you go online, they they showing you their parties, their parties look just like P. Diddy parties. Now all them coming out saying they was at the P. Diddy parties. What is happening? 
When light and dark mix, it creates bad lighting conditions. When light and dark mix, blend, the light is darker. Yeah, when they blend, you blend dark with light, the light ain't as bright. Look at this. This is the perfect example. See the circle? That's how bright the bright was before the dark hit it. When the dark hit it, it dimmed it. It's not as bright. And so in these conditions, in bad lighting conditions, people can see some things but will continue to stumble because of their impaired vision. <laughs> so when the pastor mixes the light with the dark, the people can see some things. Speak in tongues on some things. But other things they stumble over and fall because darkness has been blended with light. Matthew says, ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. If you're the light of the world, there can be no darkness in you. So we don't mix light and dark and dim the light. If you dim the light, the light is ineffective, not as effective. Can I keep preaching? When hot and cold come together, listen to this, they both lose their identity. <laughs> when you mix hot and cold, hot and cold don't exist anymore. <laughs> yeah. So that's why you'd rather have you hot or cold, because when you mix the both, they both cease to exist. This creates an abominable state, which is detestable by God. He said, because thou art lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I'm going to spew thee out of my mouth. You're not what you started out being. You lost your identity. When you allow cold and hot to come together, you lost your identity. When we do not have God's identity, we are no longer useful to him because we confuse those that want to know him. They're confused by your lack of identity. I thought you were saved. I thought you was a Christian. Oh, this is how the Christians get down? At the P. Diddy parties? P. Diddy don't want to be at his parties. And you going? So you confuse those that want to know him and then you validate those that want their sinful lifestyle oh so you about to mix the two me too because I mean I go to church and I praise the Lord on Sunday but oh boots and an overcoat Saturday yeah the blending the mixing Matthew tells us you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its savor, then it can't salt anything. Can I keep preaching? Say, not only is it not salt, nothing, but it's good for nothing. It said it's good for nothing. You know some folk in church good for nothing? It's just good for nothing. You don't change nobody. You ain't changed. Good for nothing. This is like wearing the same uniform as an opponent. Let's watch that football game. Everybody got the same uniform on. Who are we voting for? Who just scored a touchdown? If you're wearing the same uniform as the opponents while you combat them. If you are dressed the same, people will not know which team you are on. The devil uses these things to change your identity into his. 
and I've posted some of these things before. I preach these things all the time, but you know, people, we had, Julian did the new members class. That was last week. How many people you have in there? 222. So well, we can't take for granted who's been here and who's heard it. Good gracious. 200. I know he preached. I didn't hear him, but Julian be preaching. Amen. Don't he ever let he be preaching. Look at her clapping. She had the first lady clap. See that? Preacher's wife clap. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. But the devil uses these things to change your identity into his. Secular music. Do I need to elaborate on that? He uses that to change your identity in the his. Have you seen the secular artists and what they look like? They all look like ghouls and goblins. Everybody is ugly now. Ugly is in style. That'll sell records. You remember ugly wouldn't sell records. If you wasn't attractive, they'd hide your picture and just have the picture of the sea or something on there. <laughs> I thought this was... Oh, this was his album. I have a little old picture of you way in the back in the corner. Picture of sharks and vultures on the front. What kind of. <laughs> yeah, because they can't, man, we can't sell you, man, because you, you got a face for radio. We can't sell your album and stuff. But now, the more monstrous you are, the better your album will sell. You don't look monster enough. Let us tattoo your face. Put a bone in your nose. Matter sale. The more jigaboo, the better. Let's coon you up, brother. This has been the worst Black History Month I've ever seen for Black people. Black people, this is this is the worst we've ever been. We have allowed social media to make everybody fight everybody. Everybody's fighting each other. Everybody talking about their own kids, their mother, their father. They're just dogging each other out as a race. We, I'm going to say it. I don't care. You get mad if you won't. It's all online. Everybody talking. I mean, can't nobody get along. Everybody exposing the truth. They're, well, this is the truth he did. Well, he did this truth. And then my mama, and she was no good. She wasn't. My daddy wasn't there for me. Just, just, I mean, no white people are doing this. There, no, no white people are doing this. Turning against each other. Shooting each other up. Breaking in each other's houses. Acting like animals. The news won't talk about it. Because they want us to keep doing it. Yeah. Every post come across your feed is somebody talking about somebody else. Can't nobody get along. Black History Month. And it's the music that did it. It's the music that did it. White people singing about, oh, I can't wait to get my new house. And me and my wife going to come on in. You know, that country music. Yeah, that's what they were singing that. And we was, kill them, kill all the cops, shoot them, shoot them, kill them, stab them, shoot them, shoot them. Stop me when I'm lying. Stop me when I'm lying. Stop me when I'm lying. Yeah. They singing about love and family and children and kids. We singing about abortion. Sex. Weed. Every car. I get behind that look like Negroes is driving it and you know them cars. They all have that look. I mean, y'all ain't even trying to be racist. They have that look. You know that look. You know what I'm talking about. I don't want to get, I want to have to get detailed. Because some of y'all might have one. But you know, you know that car. And I get behind it and me and Jonathan are riding behind it. What I got to do, Jonathan, I got to close the vents because of weed. I don't want my son getting high following this car. 
Y'all, weed ain't legal here. Weed is not even legal. But we get behind them and that's all we can smell in our car. Animals. That's the animal kingdom. That's what it is. Because y'all let this music, I preached against it, I warned the church. You let them, look at the black boys, you can't tell. I was, I was at the store the other day get, just trying to get some food. And I said, let me try to make a difference and figure out whether these are boys or girls. I couldn't even figure it out, Delvin. This woman had about six of them, and I didn't know the boys from the girls. Y'all let this music do this. Artists start braiding their hair, now you braid yours. Artists start tatting themselves up, now you tatting yourself up. Artists started smoking weed, now you smoking weed. You let this music do it. And the devil took your identity from you and gave you his. Can I preach in here? Now these young boys that want to do right can't find wives because the girls all slutted up now. Stank. Yeah. Marked all up. And the girls want guys and they got to settle for weed smoking. Long hair junior. He ain't going to ever be consistent ever. No consistent job. No con- just no consistent. She got to be the consistent one. The woman. And when the woman has to be consistent, that's perverted order in the home. You just open the door and let the devil come in the house and control everything. Can I preach in here? I can't get off the S. Let me go through these other ones real quick. Entertainment, social media, music, movies, games, virtual reality, AI, all of this stuff is changing our identity into the devils, pledging the false gods and secret societies, substance abuse, tarot, readings, crystals, charms, trinkets, zodiac signs, all that's back in the black community. Readings. False religions. False beliefs, false gods, pagan customs, etc. Celebrity worship, being influenced by celebrities, being a busybody in celebrities' business. You know more about the Kardashians than you know about your own house. You know what North and South is doing, and you don't even know what your own children are doing. No, I'm telling the truth. Politics, liberal agenda, and conservative ideation. Both of them wrong. Amen. It ain't about being uh, liberal or conservative. It's it's about being Christian. Christ-like. I want Christ identity. That's the only thing I'm agreeing with. You keep the politics, brother. I'm agreeing with what Jesus said. Modern idols. See, they don't want to talk about these. Pride. Well, can't nobody help you. Pride where you think you better. You think you too good. You think you too good to come to church and get to work. Folks think they too good to let the pride try to help them. Quit trying to equate yourself with everybody. You ain't arrived. You need help. Look at your life. Look at your life. And I ain't talking about the one in your make-believe head. I'm talking about the one everybody else can see. Something is wrong with you and you need help. Get that pride out your heart because it's going to make you fall. Hiding behind occupation, money, and all of that. Living for the opinion of others. Yep, you got the devil's identity, all right, because that's how he lives. 
with the opinion of others. He don't exist without your bad opinions. You speaking good, he's gone. You doing good, he's gone. You doing the right thing, he ain't hanging around. I know, I, man, I feel it in my bones. It's okay. Lust. Devil uses this to change into, into his identity. Prom promiscuity, sexual sin, unnatural affections, and alluring conduct. Sometimes you can just have alluring conduct. Hey Amen. You're just too fluffy and <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Loose. Yeah, you're just loose. Men and women, you're loose. Amen. Your vision is loose. Can't be sizing everybody up every time you look around. Waiting for them to turn around. I'm preaching in here. That's okay. Yeah, that's the devil's identity. That's what the devil does. He's turned you into him. Jezebel and Ahab complexes. This opens the door for the image of God to be perverted in your home. The Jezebel Ahab. Yeah. Woman in charge. Man, one of the kids in the house. Yeah, you're going to mess your kids up. They not going to know what to do. Then all the girls in the house going to strive. And all the boys going to be no accounts. I'm preaching. It's okay. Compromise. What is compromise? Silent condoning, refusal to correct, and acceptance. That speaks for itself. And finally, hatred. This is the one. Got the black folks. Hatred. Hating everybody. Hate. They find out they can get likes and views for who they hate. They're going to tell who they hate online. Hate. Slander and tearing down others. What's a vagabond wanderer? That's a person can't nobody tell anything. They have to keep wandering. They go from church to church. The minute you tell them something, they leave. They're a wanderer, vagabond wanderer. They won't submit to anybody's authority. They don't want help. Does the devil want help? Yeah. So they have his identity. Summary. The standard of holiness must be upheld by all that name the name of Christ in order for us to have his idea. Don't get mad at me. Oh, I feel it. Whoever in here, don't, don't get, look, look, wait, stop, stop. Don't, wait, I, I, I wish, I wish I knew who, don't you, don't get mad at me. Don't get mad at me. That's your life. I don't have nothing to do with your life. And don't bring witchcraft in here. I will find your seat and pray over you and we'll rebuke you right out of here. What? Yeah. Yeah. Devil hate the truth. Yeah, that's right. hate the truth. And you know, you don't have to do, you don't have to do, all you got to do is tell the raw uncut truth. Right. And it cuts the devil like a knife and he bleeds red fiery blood. Yeah. That truth man. But don't hate the truth. You got to love the truth. That's how you know you have Christ's identity. When you have a love for the truth. And I'm not stopping. <laughs> when we mix and mingle with other gods, other religions, other faiths, other lifestyles, and other beliefs, We've lost our identity and God is not pleased with us. We must make sure we are keeping our identity in our God. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. We should wear only one uniform. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Remember that old song? I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. I got a uniform. I got stripes and awards and everything hanging from it. One uniform. I'm on one team. I'm on the winning team. Amen. 
So we should wear only one uniform. We should either be hot or cold. We should always stand for what is right, no matter what it costs us. We cannot promote, condone, or partake in presumptuous sins as believers. It's time to tear down the altars, pull down all high places, remove every idol and cast down every imagination. We must prepare for the coming of the Lord and we must remain in position to help others make it in. We cannot compromise in this hour. Amen? Amen. Mark 1 and 14 says, Now after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. And this is what he was saying. The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Do what? Repent, Repent ye and believe the gospel. So you can't put Jesus up with a trans and with all this other stuff because what Jesus is going to tell him to do is repent. Just like he tells us to repent and believe what was just preached, man. Believe the gospel. Everyone stand to your feet. Time to repent. You want to repent? Just come on up. We're going to repent. Whatever it is. Whatever it's been. Whatever it was. Whatever needs to go. You want to be Christ-like. Want his identity on you. Functioning in his identity. Looking like him. Talking like him. Believing like him. Existing like him. Not putting on a show. Do you know this is real life? Do you know this? Hold up, PJ. Do you know this is real life? Look around you. Just, 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 just tap somebody. That's a real person. This is real life. You can't pretend in real life. Wait. Listen to what I'm saying. You can't pretend in real life. This is real life. There are real consequences to behavior in real life. There are. This is real. You can't play like you're somebody. Everybody's going to know who you are. You can't pretend you're somebody you're not. Everybody's going to know. It's real life. It's real life. It's real life. So you got to fix this now. Fix it now. Fix it now. Because it's real life. Real life. And in this real life, I want to exemplify Christ. I want Christ in my real life. I really want to know him. I really want to please him. I really want to be like him. For real for real. Amen? Real life. Real life, man. Coming to church acting like you something you're not. Getting around these people and putting on like you something. This is real. This is real. Everyone bow your heads. Okay, PJ. Father God, we just thank you for this message Lord for the truth coming Father God against all the opposition the enemy trying to stop it but he can't stop your truth so we thank you Lord that your truth goes forth anyway we thank you Father God for calling us into this place to hear it and we come before you right now with a heart of repentance God repenting for the things that we have tried to hold on to, things we involved ourselves in, the things, Father God, that nobody knows about, that we just tried to keep doing. But Lord, we know we can't keep doing it. So we repent. And we repent because we know it's wrong. We know it's wrong because of the word of God that is being preached to us. The truth, the separation, the line of demarcation, it's being spoken 
So we want to abide by your truth. We want to be in your truth. We want to live your truth. We want to walk in your truth. So we repent right now, Lord. Save us from presumptuous sins. Save us from the sins of our youth. Save us, Father God. Deliver us from the things that so easily beset us. Help us to walk this walk with faith and confidence. Help us to be pleasing to you, to be real in this hour. God, it doesn't matter who we once were. All that matters is who we are now. And we want to walk in the newness of your light with no darkness mixed in. We want the brightest of lights to shine through us. No darkness mixed in. No changing uniforms. No hot and cold mixture. But we want to be who we're supposed to be. In the name of Jesus, we pray. We thank you. And Lord, we, come on everyone, just lift your hand. Lord, we just love you. Because in this hour, you're speaking to us. And you're speaking to us where we are. And you're telling us the things that we need to hear. And you're saying the things that we need to know. And you're preparing us for your coming. So we thank you, Lord. Thank you for truth. Thank you for ABC. Thank you for this place that you've brought us to where we can hear messages like this. God, and we know you're going to speak truth to us because you love us, you care about us, and you want us to do what is right. So we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, hug somebody and say, I identify with Christ. That's my identity. I identify with Christ. That's my identity. That's my identity. I identify with Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't let this TV and media and social media and all this junk let this stuff turn you into no monkey amen you ain't no monkey you're a distinguished person royal priesthood holy nation of people royalty in God's eyes we ain't monkeys we didn't derive from them we ain't no monkey so don't be acting like one get out of folks business amen